Hi everyone, the Lone Wolf here. Welcome back to Eve Talk, your weekly look at the market in Eve Online. We are a bit over a month away from the expansion into the Abyss. I'm pretty stoked for that. I do look forward to testing different ships in these Abyssal Dead Space pockets. And I think we're a bit under a month away from the 15 year anniversary for Eve Online. Uh, if we can go by what I heard there uh, about that at FanFest, it should be an interesting and actually quite challenging event that might actually have lots of lore to it. So I do think I might prepare an extra ship for that as well. And of course, we get that Society of Conscious Thought battleship if you're an Omega clone. Um, I think like between the announcement and uh, the uh, the actual uh, start of the uh, or the actual birthday uh, of uh, EVE Online. So lots of cool stuff to look forward to. All of that should also mean some interesting stuff on CC to come in the uh, decently near future. So there's definitely a lot of good stuff uh, on the way in EVE Online or at least interesting stuff uh, if you're not really for those abyssal dungeons. We are here for the market of course, my personal expectation on this is that this won't impact the market all too much at this point. Uh, basically because as I've said in my video about these abyssal dungeons, I feel like most of this is just a horizontal expansion of the sandbox. It's just another pillar, something else to do that will mostly exist next to the existing uh, sandbox in EVE Online. Um, so it won't interact or interfere with it all too much, I think. Uh, except maybe the new ships, those could be quite interesting. Let us start with Plex and stuff at 1 minute 55. Like that. And Plex, I think we're back up a little bit in Jita. Up, but more has come in since I've uh, done the ticker. So around 3 million for the sellers in Jita. Around 2.9 million for the buyers in Jita, of course. Plex is super safe to carry these days with the uh, the special hold for them. So the buyers, there is a big market for those on the player owned uh, stations and 2.9 million for the sellers here and two points. Whoa, that's really close to each other. Still 2.9 million for the buyers as well. Look at that. That is just nothing in margin between the sellers and the buyers. So I think that we're hitting like a bottom on the chart at around 2.9 million is just below that. Exactly. And um, this is obviously a nice pullback in the last four, almost four months here. So I would say that this is... Uh, the time to look into some plex if you have the long enough horizon and that you want to protect your isk from general inflation in the game who knows what uh, what will happen of course the abyss uh, generally uh, we hope that it's going to be a success of course for the health of the game uh, but if it's not a success this might actually lower the demand for plex for uh, for uh, all of the different uh, things that you can do for plex and uh, with plex in the game and as a result you're never certain, of course, but this does look like a pretty nice time to try to stock up on some of those 2.9 million plex, some plex that are cheaper than 3 million isk. And we can see from the past that the potential for 3.5 million is actually very close. If you give it another year of inflation, I think we can get there pretty easily. Might not be on the next expansion, but then who knows what comes out in winter. So um yeah it's an interesting chart if you're looking to do purchases in plex i think they're cheaper than they have been for a, quite a while uh, like more than half a year for sure next up we have the multiple pilot training certificates they are recovering from those massive sales by ccp that dropped the price down to uh, 880 million is let's say that you could have picked a couple up maybe one or two because really um, well actually considering the high volumes on this this lower price you could have definitely picked up a couple of multiple pilot training certificates for like 900 million isk now they're already selling for 1.1 million buyers are coming in at 1 million the big difference of course is that the volumes are dropping down quite dramatically so it's not that easy to make that trade uh, very quickly to flip multiple pilot trading certificates when ccp does come out with a sale but you could definitely have picked up a couple of those really cheap ones for less than a billion isk and then just wait for them to go back to a normal price of around 1.2 to 1.3 billion isk and there you go you've got some nice profit that's definitely one that uh, if you were looking to actively trade in something that was going up in price you just don't know when you're going to be able to unload it this does seem uh, like a no-brainer to me 
Next up, we have the skill extractors. Those, of course, follow Plex very closely. So forming a bottom very close to 330 million is slightly on the uptrend at the tail end there. Selling for 337 million is bars coming in at 326. A bit more of a margin here uh, in these skill extractors compared to Plex themselves. I think it's because the price went up a little bit. So let's see what we've got here. 326, 330. A little bit above that on average. So nope, that margin has been there uh, pretty consistently uh, because the sellers are, you know, outdoing the buyers a little bit, forcing the average price up above 330 million. Is. So skill extractors actually showing a real bottom forming and actually the first uh, signs of uh, increased prices as well, um, which could translate to the same thing for Plex pretty soon. Next up, we have the large skill injectors. Those are staying pretty flat at around 800 million. It's actually a little bit of pressure at the tail end here. That is quite interesting. 803 million is for the sellers and 800 million just below that for the buyers. Um, I guess that there haven't really been any um, any uh, announcements at FanFest or anything like that that I can spot that would indicate a massive increase in demand for uh, for skill points. In fact, uh, during one of the round tables, some questions did fall uh, about uh, stuff like uh, zero zero balance, the economy in zero zero. Are they happy with the uh, the incredible fountains of ores, the incredible fountains of isk that are created by the endlessly respawning anomalies there? And, um, you know, there were some indications that CCP isn't happy with it, isn't going to do anything about it short term, but it's probably on their long term radar uh, to keep a close eye on that and to not let that become a real problem for the game. And as a result, you know, if you're looking to um, buy those skill points for that Rorcal pilot or for that carrier pilot to go ratting or something like that, just to add another one. I think that there, there might be a bit of hesitation to keep growing and growing and growing in those types of activities and investments because you may, um, you know, that party may stop at some point when CCP does decide to make a move on that. And other than the Triglavian ships, which should be a new line of, uh, of skills, and skill point demand. Uh, there's not been really any announcements that would indicate that we'll be wanting lots of skill points for new skills very soon. And the Triclavian ships, I mean, we're probably talking about um, a frigate, a cruiser, a battleship, and a new weapon system. It's not that many skill points, so I don't think. So I think that that's basically why the market is staying decently flat at around 800 million isk. Um, pretty much close to, uh, to Plex being Flattening out here as well, hesitation in the large scale injector market, except it's actually on the downtrend here as we just broken and went back up above 800 million isk now, we're hesitating to stay there. The small skill injectors next, those have basically recovered from the little dip as well, went below 160 million, but are basically just below 170 on their average price, 162 for the sellers, 156 to 157 uh, for, the, um, for the buyers of small skill injectors. And here again, we're not really seeing any signs that the market is going nuts for skill points at the moment, more of a wait and see approach and um, pretty flat price right there. And then finally, we have the daily alpha injector as well that is going down in price. That is quite interesting. Uh, 56 million isk for the sellers, 50 million isk for the buyers of the daily alpha injectors. Slightly down in price. Interesting chart actually, definitely below the average. The biggest problem that uh, I'm seeing here, of course, is that the chart is still so new that it's hard to say um, if this has any momentum or if this is a, a worthy place to try and maybe buy a couple of these daily alpha injectors to try and sell them later on. Risky business since you're uh, actually buying those straight from CCP. And oh, the fans from uh, my PCs are actually doing quite a bit of work. I'm hoping that you don't hear too much of that in the background. But let's move on to the uh, minerals. That's going to be at 9.45 like that and as always we'll start with tritanium 
I would say that this is pretty good for miners at the moment. A flat week between 5 and 5.5 risk. No sign of a major dump or anything like that. We're just managing to keep Tritanium above 5 isk. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, 6 jumps away. Someone is selling a little bit of Tritanium for 5 isk. Uh, round, but first sellers coming in at 518, buyers coming in at 496. Um, 1.3 billion is a decent amount of supply. Also, almost a full front page of new supply in the last 24 hours. So, there is lots of supply, but it looks like there is enough demand to support all of that at the moment. So, good news you can still mine for Tritanium, you're getting a decent price, and uh, no real crash in that price here so far. Pyrite, probably a different story. Again, playing with those one year low points. This one is really not doing too well. 442 for the sellers, 418 for the buyers. Bit of a margin opening up between sellers and buyers, but just look at the price range here. 4 to 4.5 is one year low point. Really not great. Massively oversupplied still. Fresh supply that comes in. Well, half a front page here uh, of a new. Uh, pyrite coming in with 2 billion units 1.2 billion units that is not good that is of course going to keep that price from ever really recovering to a higher range at the moment next up we have mexalon 80 isk on the chart probably dipping a little bit below that but keep in mind 80 isk is close to that one year high point definitely still the focus if you're mining in high sick 80.65 for the sellers 73.24 for the buyers as expected a little bit of a margin is opening up there um, and uh, an increase in supply would drop the price back down but getting more than 80 isk for a sale of Mexalon I think is a great price definitely your focus next up we have Noxium that actually jumps up in price a little bit after must be noted again, reaching 300 disc, one year low point. Um, then investors move in and, and actually bid the price up a little bit. 321 now for the sellers, 302 for the buyers. And this increased price actually hardly uh, noticeable on the volume scale, which probably means that we just have needed a couple of purchases at around 300 disc, maybe 3 to 320, something like that, to bring this volatility to the chart. And uh, whoever made that investment, well, is counting on 300 to really be a bottom price. Or maybe they need some Noxium for some reason. Uh, maybe uh, an area of Nelsic or something like that needs a lot of them. It's not mineable in all of Heisek, I don't think. So maybe there's like a, a good trade to be made once Noxium hits 300. Maybe there's another trade hub where you always command a premium because of the rarity in that region itself. Stuff like that is definitely possible. Uh, it's an interesting little volatile blip that um, that is a little bit of an anomaly here, but has been uh, shown to happen a couple of times whenever Noxium uh, goes for that 300 mark. So quite interesting. Um, perhaps we should look into that. If, if maybe there is a trade to do with buying Noxium at 300 in Jita and then actually selling it somewhere else. Next up, we have um, Zydrine, which I'm no longer really going to call these the, the Gnostic Minerals, uh, all that specifically, because we can clearly see that the supply from 0.5 systems has cratered the price, got like 30% of the normal 1000 disc price for Zydrine, and uh, it recovered a little bit, but it's staying below 700 disc at this point. 678 for the seller, 644 for the buyers. And what I constantly see here is that you've got many more suppliers. So you've got 5 million here, 6 million here, 3.5 million here. All of those in the last 24 hours, it's more than a full front page. So what I'm seeing here is lots of individual corporations mining that stuff in HiSec from their 0.5 uh, refineries. And whenever they've got a couple million in stock, they just move that to Jita to do their own sale. This is quite different from um, from uh, before the moon mining changes and the refineries coming to 0.5 systems. You would have bigger sell orders in volumes, in quantity, but you would have uh, uh, many fewer of them and they would be able to basically command the price. We're here at 644 um, to 678 and the average price on the chart is going for 676. Now that's still very close to the sellers, but I personally expect that the, the average price on the chart is going to start to get much closer uh, uh, as an average between the sellers and the buyers 
because there are just more small and small sellers and at some point the buy orders are going to start to just get filled by those people as well um, the rarity uh, the need for that import from Nalsec is basically gone here and it has drastically changed the Zytrine and Megasite market which is continuing its descent one year low point 682 on par with Zytrine quite interesting 709 for the sellers of uh, Megasite 680 for the buyers a little bit higher than Zydran but really not by much anymore uh, basically an unstoppable uh, drive down here first one first leg down of course was with uh, moon mining just being introduced because it added a new source of Megasite although it was contained to Nalsec and Losec but here is then the second drive down when they were in um, refineries came to 0.5 systems it just completely changed the dynamic and we are now talking very cheap megasite and zydrine morphite I, I think is still unique to nullsec although here it is dipping down to less than 9000 is gone average 8 800 interesting let's see what sellers and buyers are at 9300 for the sellers 8300 for the buyers if you are looking for that morphite investment 8300 on the chart is definitely at the low end you could i think risk it on a buy order um considering this pretty violent downtrend that is something that we've seen before as well with more fight the bottom has gone a little bit lower but it is still a pretty good investment to make because at some point you see those volatile um those volatile periods where we go to 11 12,000 isk so now if you could buy that at 8,300 i think a small morphite purchase is definitely uh, not a bad idea next up we're moving to our pi at 1640 like that let's go over these i personally um well there is some pi announcements but it's basically we're gonna need to do fewer clicks in order to set up pi and maybe also in order to restart our pi so it's it's not really the system itself that changes it's just a little bit of quality of life changes that are uh, in the pipeline in fact there is a dev blog on that that has just come out so i personally don't think that we'll see too much um, that is CCP driven, more market driven, uh, that is definitely possible of course. And then longer term, perhaps this could mean more supply and thus a decrease in price once again as it becomes basically more accessible, less time consuming to do your PI. It might perhaps convince uh, a decent chunk of people that said, nah, I don't want to do all that clicking. All right, let's get into uh, the PI production because it is of course one of the most passive ways to make ISK in EVE Online. Here are the broadcast notes very interesting uh, situation here going up to almost 2.5 million sellers are up to uh, 2.7 million is buyers at 2.5 million that is definitely a pretty nice increase in price i'm not sure what is commanding that at the moment um, it can't really be demand for extra uh, for for structures across the board so perhaps there is a uh, uh, a party in Nalsec or something like that that is in need of uh, of lots of production perhaps someone wants a quick keep store or something like that might be happening but there is definitely a very in, uh, a very noticeable increase in price here to well above average for the broadcast notes which to me comes out of nowhere the construction blocks after climbing to 15,000 isk are giving back most of those gains uh, on the charts 13,000 isk 13,400 for the sellers, 13,000 for the buyers. Still a bit above average, so you can definitely still try to sell your construction blocks. But know that we are on our way down. Any extra supply is going to put us quickly back on that average of around 12,000 ISK. Consumer Electronics next, staying decently strong, I would say. Um, although, if we basically disregard this dip, we are just around the average price of 13 to 14,000 ISK. 15,200 for the sellers though, that's not bad. 14 for the buyers, probably. Buyers around average, sellers a touch above average. Coolants for the fuels, well, continuing that slow increase uh, in price to 9,000 ISK. I would love to see uh, coolants be above 9,000 ISK once again. That's been quite a while, although we had a little teaser right here early April. Sellers at 9,233, buyers at 8,700. But the fact that the average price is in between uh, these two, in fact, just below 9,000 ISK, does mean that it's 
So there's still so much supply out there that a, a decent amount of it uh, is being dropped straight to those buyers here. And that's exactly what I was talking about when it comes to that Zydrine uh, price. Whenever it came, when it, it came from only Nulsic in, in, in the past, you had so few sell orders and really no one uh, that was going to be impatient enough to dump straight to the buy orders. And here we see the exact opposite. You can get coolants from anywhere. It's very, very easy to produce. And as a result, uh, the average price is very close to be in between the sellers and the buyers because both of them have their own market, uh, which is definitely changing in those Nulsic minerals. Enriched uranium next, pretty flat at around 11,000 ISK. So, you know, it's fuel related. It's definitely lower than its normal average, but it's staying uh, decently stable at this price range. 11,700 for the sellers, 10,700 for the buyers. Um, you know, I would say if you're making enriched uranium, if you're making coolants, you just have to accept these prices. And um, I think that, you know, you just... Have the patience for a sell order so you get a little bit more isk is what i would say but you know if you want to get rid of it right away then just sell straight to the buyers why not uh integrity response drones next also a little bit of an upswing here at the tail end average you could say 2.5 million now selling for 2.7 million buyers are at 2.5 million so again another advanced pi material which is related to structures that is above average although it's not as noticeable as the broadcast nodes the mechanical parts dipping back below 9,000 ISK sellers, 9,300 buyers, 8,600. Again, same thing, very easy to produce. So lots of suppliers, some people are impatient enough to sell to those buyers. The nuclear reactors next, after managing to go to 100,000 ISK, are back below uh, 130. 1000 disk are back below 100,000 disk. What are the buyers at? 95,000. I find that pretty interesting. Sellers at 99,500, buyers at 95,000. Um, it's only 5,000 as well. So a little bit of impatient supply could bring us in range of nuclear reactors for 93,000 disk. And that would, I think, be a really nice opportunity to try and pick some of those cheaper ones up. Although we have been lower in the past. Keep that in mind. But it's a nice volatile PI material that seems to move in waves. Go below 100,000 disk for a bit. Then move up. Uh, be quite a decent amount above that. Like 130,000 range is definitely doable. Very interesting if you're looking for some predictable uh, potential trades. Robotics um next after climbing 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 managing to go to uh, above 100,000 disk and staying there for a little bit dipping back below that on average so sellers are coming in at 102,000 disk bars at 94,500 a little bit more supply coming in driving the price down which i think is normal if uh, any of these fuel fuel related pi materials do know a period of slightly higher prices for a while there will be supply out there somewhere that is going to plug that gap and try to take that disc. Self-harmonizing power core next. Uh, actually staying close to its average. Not really seeing a massive move up there. 2.2 million for the sellers, 2 million for the buyers. Decent supply. Not much to say. Superconductors next after also staying at 14,000 disc, which is definitely a little bit above average for a bit, is having to give back that uh, those gains. 13,000 for the sellers, 12,000 for the buyers. I'd say maybe sellers are still a bit above average, but not by much anymore. We are definitely coming close to that uh, 12,500 average uh, for superconductors. Test cultures though, these are taking off, which I find very interesting. It's usually uh, structure related. Now you see the broadcast node increase in price. Here is a test culture incre increase in price. So we had a bottom of like 7,400 ISK and currently selling for 10,400. Not bad, bars at 9,500. Definitely above average. Even if it's not the best sell opportunity, it is a small sell opportunity for the test cultures that you picked up around March. Uh, late February, early March. And now we've got wetware mainframes that are staying a bit above average, but also seeing some pressure at the tail end. Sellers are coming in at almost 2.6 million, buyers at almost 2.5 million is a bit above average. We're still paying that premium for some reason for advanced PI materials, although I'm not seeing any real reasons for that, except maybe more Nulsic development or just general development in the game for more structures. 
After that we're moving to take one ships that is at 24.45. Like that. Let's go over these um, minerals. Well, Mixolon is doing okay. Uh, Tritanium is doing okay. Everything else is under pressure. One year low points. So I don't think we'll see any breakouts. The margins should still be quite good. Even at these less than average prices. And so the apocalypse is basically flat at its current trade range. 145 for the sellers. Um, not even that much supply. Take one ships. They're not really in the meta all that much. The Caracal bouncing off of 9 million. Heading for 924. But I think we'll get plugged quite quickly again. Which is kind of strange you would think maybe a, a price increase up to uh, 10 million or something like that would get plugged quite quickly but nope look at that 110 of them lots of competition uh, below this price points and um, there's just really a very easy way to get lots of supply in these caracals very cheap minerals at the moment there's very little reason to try to get 10 11 million for a caracal so it's 9.2 for the sellers 8.7 for the first buyer Definitely here below the average of the one year chart. The catalyst next continuing its descent, new a nice little period of high prices, which was probably uh, the preparation period for the latest burn cheetah. All of that's over now, so we are dipping back towards a million isk. Sellers 1.1 million, buyers 1 million isk. Supply wise, well, it's not too crazy, but catalyst very easy to make with those cheap minerals. I don't see this going anywhere. The Drake next is staying below 45 million. He's trying to get back there after this massive drop down. But you can't really say that this is much more than an average price for the Drake. 46 for the sellers, 42.6 for the buyers. The Ferox next, that one is descending to a one year low point of just 40 million. 44 million for the sellers, 38.5 for the buyers. Very, very cheap Ferroxes here. Um, one year low point. This is probably more than just the mineral prices, but I think if you're making new Ferroxes, I don't know how badly is this to try and sell them at 44 million isk. I think it's not even that bad. I don't think you're losing that much isk. The Hurricane next, slight uptick, but really it's 45 million for the Hurricane on average, 50 million for the sellers, 42 for the buyers. The Megatron, again, flat below. You could say, I would say the average here, 160 here, Staying at 150, bit of pressure at the tail end as well. Sellers, 153 million. The Oracle also continuing to show that pressure. So anything that was above average, you could say, is now reeling from the mineral prices. Here is the Oracle down to less than 70 million isk, just 70.7 for the sellers and 64.7 million for the buyers. That margin still staying quite strong. So the pressure is on as long as the minerals stay low. I don't see any of these really recovering. The Raven around the average uh, for the year actually at this point. So 161 for the sellers, 151 for the buyers. Interesting, uh, there must be some decent amount for Ravens out there. Next up we've got the Retriever, pretty much the same thing here. Uh, managed to go above 22.5 million isk, but the mineral decrease is just putting that pressure on. 20 million for the sellers, almost 21 actually, and 18 million for the buyers. Average price dipping to less than 20 million now. The Tempest also, you know, still recovering, actually managing to go to 160 from time to time. I guess 159 for the sellers, 141 for the buyers. Not so bad uh, supply wise, but it's actually quite decent. Although the, the numbers, the quantities here are quite low. Um, you know, Tempest doing quite nicely uh, in, in this uh, period of, uh, I'd say, difficult margins for the producers. The Trasher next, that one is uh, showing the pattern again, dipping below 1 million isk. Yep, sellers and buyers for less than a million isk. That's definitely a below average price. And uh, what I wanted to say at this point, right, the Tempest is still doing okay. The Raven is still doing okay. This is actually not completely unexpected. Um, it's the, the decrease in price for minerals generally um, is seen first in the smaller ships because they're easier to produce, quicker to produce, they don't take that many minerals. So if you have a really a sustained decrease in price that shows up in these smaller markets like the destroyers here at the moment, I would say um, I feel like it's a pretty safe bet that unless the mineral market really uh, swings around for some reason 
um, then we are going to see this go to the higher tiers as well then cruisers then battle cruisers and eventually even the battleships like the raven and like the tempest will also start to drop in price uh, the tornado next uh, staying uh, well, you know, strange volatility here. Let's see what the sellers are at. 69 million is, buyers are at 57 million is. We can expect that volatility to basically be the lack of actual supply. Couple of actual sales, which you can see here on the volumes, can very quickly uh, switch things around. What might be happening here, I'm not exactly sure, but uh, the Abyss does give a very easy and potentially quite valuable ganking target in Heisek and um, rather than having many uh, many destroyers there perhaps it's easier to try and to just park a couple tornadoes on those beacons and maybe there is some ganking preparation happening with those increased tornado volumes right here the tristan of frigate though is clearly showing that pressure right here average 500,000 isk and you can see the decline just in tandem with the mineral decline basically currently selling for less than 500,000 isk buyers at 426 quite cheap as well venture all right something quite unusual massive volume increase here all of a sudden on average we're talking uh three four five hundred on average here all of a sudden we have a couple thousand being sold and as a result sellers are up to 1.8 million is buyers at 250,000 is i'm not sure why this would be uh, but that's a pretty crazy and unusual jump in the venture market but the vexor is showing that action as well uh, for the minerals going well below 10 million is at this point 9.5 for the sellers 8.7 for the buyers yeah, the tech one market i think as long as the mineral market stays the same we are going to start to see more pressure across the bigger ships as well next up the tech two market at 31.50 there we go uh let's take a look at these and maybe try to spot sell or buy opportunities so here is the aries at this point so i'm going to see dips that uh, especially play with 25 million but that go below 30 million might be by opportunities and let's take a look at the areas here currently selling for 34 million um, well if we take these low points here then we are talking about 28 million for the buyers are you making a lot of risk on that not really we'd love to see more volatility but maybe a small trade is possible uh, in that situation the Cerberus next um, that one could be quite interesting of course although it is now settling at 280 million isk 280 for the sellers 262 for the buyers uh, i think there could be increased interest because of course cruisers will be used in the abyss if you want to prep i think you want different types of cruisers Cerberus is a missile platform with drones it's a very classic pve platform that we know there will be counters for in the abyss that doesn't mean that a certain uh, abyssal dead space pocket might be perfect for the cerberus some might have increased missile damage increased shield resistance things like that would be perfect for the cerberus so i think that there will be interest across the board for those especially tech 2 cruisers i think they will be the go-to choice if you can fly them uh, and if you can use them in the abyss i'm assuming that you can uh, because you can't really go covered ups with something like the cerberus um, but as a result I think that we will see a lot of interest in these tech 2 cruisers for all kinds not just for one that is the best Cerberus is generally considered one of the best PvE cruisers out there um, that might actually change depending on the type of pocket you end up in the claw next also still at a pretty high point coming under pressure just a little bit but I would say so this is neither sell or buy order territory sellers coming in at 34 million still buyers above 30 million I wouldn't make a move on that to be honest the crow um, same thing here slowly flattening out buyers you know we're talking 28 27 million here selling for 34 31 for the buyers again in my opinion not a great time to do anything on these the crusader also going back above 13 million isk so 31.6 I don't think that's enough to really be selling lots of these 28 million considering where we've been 
I think that's still too much as well to try and buy. So I'm not really spotting too many opportunities except here, Interdictor, the Heretic, going up to 90 million isk, lack of availability, sellers at 90. If you have a couple, I think you can try to make a good deal on that. Just about a month ago, 68 million for the buyers. So 68 for the buyers, 90 million now for the sellers. Not bad, um, I would say, or that's the average price, but then I'm assuming that you could have picked one up at that price is basically what I'm doing. So that's definitely a worthy trade here in the interdictor. Keep one thing in mind, of course, volumes are quite low. It's going to be difficult to pull off. Next up, we've got the Hound also on its way back down after reaching more than 35 million isk. Currently, what are the buyers at? Still above 30 million. Don't like it. Sellers 31. Don't like it. So unfortunately, that's another no. Ishtar at a one year high point, pretty much 300 million is 306 for the sellers, 283 for the buyers. Again, I'm personally seeing that as interest in tech 2 uh, cruisers. Manticore next, very flat at 35 million is. So, you know, do you want to make trades in at this point? I don't think so. Uh, the Nemesis next, flat above 30 million, but again, not the high point for around 35, not the low point of around 25. This was a definitely a decent little trade to make in the Nemesis. Now, unfortunately, we're in between the two, so that's a big no. Pontifex taking off again, so that's going to be again lack of availability, 126 million. Can you try a trade in the Pontifex, buy for 75, sell for 125, sure. Are you ever going to sell a dozen of those? I don't think so. The Purifier next also on its way back down. So high point was 40 million, low point 30 million. That is something to remember. That is definitely a decent trade. But right now sellers are at almost 35 million bars or almost 32 million. So that's a big no again. The Raptor. The Raptor is maybe in sell order territory. You could have picked those up for around 30 million. They're currently selling for 37 million. You know, yeah, 20, a bit above 20%. Not so bad, I would say. Um, so... Here, the Raptor, yep, slight sell opportunity for the Raptor, I would say. The Saber next, going back down in price, but same thing here, 70 million, high point 76 million, do you want a uh, 78 maybe, do you want to make trades here? Yeah. Not for me, not for me, thank you. Uh, the Stiletto, nice little jump up here all of a sudden, that makes it an interesting pattern if you want to look at it from... When do I buy? When do I sell? Right? The Stiletto manages to get just below 30 million is. So maybe you can pick some of those up at 29. But now 37 million sell opportunity almost. That's not so bad. Buyers coming in at 35 as well. Showing that strong interest all of a sudden. This was a worthy little trade to make if you picked them up when the chart reached less than 30 million. And I was waiting for 25. Next up, we've got the Stork. Also. 71 million for, uh, for the low point here you could say 110 million for the high point but again volume wise here it's going to be tricky and then finally we've got the Taranis as well low point 25 million currently at 30 million a fifth you know uh, sellers are back down to 28 million though Okay, the chart still needs to pick up. Is all of this fresh supply? Not really. Sellers coming in at 28 million. Buyers coming in at 28 million as well. Interesting. Something to keep an eye out for in the upcoming days and weeks, I think. If this manages to uh, gain a foothold, if more people start to... Um, compete with these two sell orders rather than just quickly pick them up and then uh, you know go back to 30.5 million then look out for buyers to go back below uh, to go back lower head back for 25 million potentially you could create a buy opportunity in the Taranese market this way interesting next up we have the tech tree market that is at 38.45 like that um, let's take a look at these, but I think it's again not great news. Here is the Confessor again playing with the low points, the local low points. It's not a one year low, that's 30 million, but we can clearly see that there is a massive decrease in price that happened on average. 36 million for the sellers with still 339 of them coming in. That's that oversupply spectre that I was talking about. 31.5 for the buyers. So. I think buyers, you know, 31 million, that is interesting enough to try and risk some of these, but don't go crazy with the volumes. There's just too many ships here that it's going to be very tricky 
to find and time the bottom on this one so always make sure that even if you buy manage to buy a couple at 32 million that it's not a hundred of them that that uh, that a month from now might actually see buyers of 30 million again be careful here but to purchase a couple of these on those buy orders i think does make a lot of sense on this chart the hecate next actually jumping back up on a pretty big volume spike from 35 million up to 40 million and already on its way back down so basically i think what happened here was pretty big purchase by everything below 45 million basically but look at the listing that happens right away less than 40 million and keep going down to 38.3 million buyers are just staying put 36 million out i won't even be paying that for my hecate so here a little bit of a blip in the chart but the pressure is obviously still on if you look at how quickly we're going back with massive supplies the Jack Doll knock next, uh, actually now breaking 37.5 million on the chart. Averages less than 35 million for the sellers. The buyers coming in at 32 million. I'd say we're in the same situation. You don't see the massive supply here at these bottom prices, but 466 and another 57 at 36 million is going to keep the price from really breaking out anytime soon competition starts well below that 32 million for the buyers the jackdaw incredible ship really used a lot in Nelsic as well uh, here I, i'd say it's in the same boat as the confessor you can definitely try to pick up a couple of cheap jackdaws don't go crazy with your volumes make sure that you can keep going as this oversupply situation might still grow and then finally this vehicle same thing heading for 30 million almost on the chart here 33 for the sellers 30.3 for the buyers definitely i'd say a nice time to try to pick up a couple at let's say 30.5 million if you can manage that then for the longer term on a big nasik war you are going to make isk but again keep in mind that we are still talking hundreds of ships here hundreds of ships here and then for the hecate what's that looking like it's not hundreds but Overall, we're clearly getting to more than 100 hectares as well. And where will supply, where will production move to from Jack Dawes, from Confessor now? It's of course to hectares, it's probably to Zweppels as well, which, uh, well, it's, it's a 99 sell order right here. But it's something to keep in mind. The oversupply specter is definitely uh, doing its thing at the moment. And uh, timing that bottom is going to be very difficult in the destroyer market but i do like it for some small purchases at this point especially that's vapor 30 million crazy bottom price i mean that is the one year low price pretty much next up for the cruisers we've got the legion that actually shoots up in price to 200 million is all of a sudden on lack of availability so if you don't have well that's a bit of a surprise to me uh, i thought that uh, there were still hundreds of legions on the market as well relisting at 200 million quite expensive super volatile here interesting loki jumping up to 250 actually moving on its way back down so 230 for the sellers to 10 for the buyers let's see what the protest is doing then that one is still pretty flat i'd say that the protest is basically a little bit too big in market and there's not enough demand to do something like that uh, on the on the protest market for the tengu they tried but look at that it's already on its way back down as well selling for 165 150 for the buyers and the real listing of 500 tengus at 165 is going to normally keep the price from jumping up the same way that the legion does but i guess that the market for the legion there is enough demand in the legion and in the low key and there is there there are few enough ships that a big player is making moves on those trying to drive that price up uh, substantially all of a sudden quite interesting so very risky market um of course it's cruiser takes more to produce so it is possible to do that in a couple of cruiser segments i think it's a lot harder to do this in the destroyer market which is why we're actually seeing that supply uh, crush the price here in the destroyers and we're still seeing some weird stuff in the cruisers interesting situation uh, but my bet if you're looking for that longer term trade on nostic activity would be the destroyers at the moment and then finally for the extra product at 44.10. We are going to take the ice products this week. Just out of interest, uh, fuels have been meandering a little bit. So I am curious to see what's happening with all of the ice products at the moment. Let's take a look at heavy water for instance. Something that is used in ice products 
No, it's isotopes. Heavy water. I'm not exactly sure where that is used uh, in. But it's at a high point. Selling for almost 600 risk on the one year chart. This is actually a doubling of the price over one year. Not bad. Something that I like about this as well. 300 bottom, 500 top. Going back down to uh, 330. 600 top. Going back down to... Uh, 364 here now currently selling for 543 that's one two three buy opportunities one two three sell opportunities over the course of a year very interesting chart if you're looking for potential uh, trades or investments where you don't need to pay too close attention to the market it's not gonna just flick a switch and and, and the bottom is gonna drop out of that but you have sell, several sell opportunities and several buy opportunities that are quite marked on this chart Helium isotopes, let's take a look at that. Also actually at a pretty high point for the year here, 900 disc. Looks to me like um, the increase in demand for all of those refineries in 0.5 systems and in wormhole space is starting to, uh, to um, show on the chart quite visibly. So helium selling for around 900, not a one year high point, but definitely higher than the average earlier in the year. Hydrogen isotopes actually going for a one year high point, 1240 for the sellers, quite interesting. That is definitely um, ice products with the changes to moon mining have been under pressure before that. I feel like they were under pressure as well, but now all of these isotopes doing quite well so far. Next up we've got the liquid own zone also going up in price a little bit heading for 112. It's above average, it's definitely not that great just yet, but again looks pretty good in the demand side nitrogen isotopes one year high point as well 1000 is that was a nice little trade here couple months 700 to a thousand not bad oxygen isotopes i suspect that they are at the high end as well yes they are they're definitely above average but they're not at the one year high point just yet interesting situation and then finally the one bad product strontium which happens to be my one investment for around half a billion so nothing too crazy but i do have some strontium that i bought on one of these bottoms here it's just not going anywhere strontium is selling for 2700 buyers or at 2500 i think i picked some up at like 26 or something like that um yeah strontium is the one ice product that is not doing all too well but all the others are at one year high points definitely above average very interesting situation i think you are getting a decent amount of risk for your ice mining efforts at the moment very very interesting look at the potential trades here as well nitrogen 700 risk to a thousand that's not bad then we've got the hydrogen isotopes well you had to take the gamble six months ago 625 currently selling for double that price not bad helium isotopes also six months ago at 6 to 700 currently going for 900 disc not bad not bad at all in my opinion very interesting situation maybe i should have uh, kept a closer look on these markets when it was introduced probably announced that moon mining was coming to 0.5 systems and all of that good stuff anyways that's it for this week guys thank you very much for watching and i'll see you all next time